Does growth hormone affect muscle growth? Today, we're going to dive into a topic that is currently rather controversial, and I really don't understand why. There seem to be many doctors and scientists online that are claiming and stating that growth hormone doesn't affect muscle growth. while there are many doctors who claim that it does. So what is the truth and why is there this controversy and how do we end this debate? Now, I believe our body is a system. If you influence or affect one area of that system, either in a positive or a negative way, it will in turn affect other areas of the system and most likely with a similar result. Looking at one small part of that system and saying, uh, hey, this part right here, it uh is not affected by this part from the beginning there so it's definitely not related is just a little ridiculous to me so in this video I will take the research studies and graphics that I have seen over the years to display and try to prove how natural occurring growth hormone in the body definitely affects muscle growth and why I believe that if you strive for long-term muscle growth then I believe it's very very simple you should just focus on trying to naturally raise and optimize your growth hormone levels as much as you possibly can in your life. There's so much misinformation out there on how to increase muscle growth when it's really very simple. When you're in the gym, there's three major keys that I've discussed in previous videos. You guys can go see those in the description box below. But when you're out of the gym, you just need to be focusing on trying to increase your growth hormone levels as much as you possibly can naturally. And we're going to break down and discuss how growth hormone affects your muscle growth in this video. So let's get right into it. So in order to understand how growth hormone affects muscle growth, we must first understand how muscle actually grows. Now there's a lot that goes on here, but very basically your brain sends a signal to motor neurons in that area of the body. And when they receive that message, those neurons fire, causing muscles to contract or relax, which results in an action or movement occurring. The bigger the challenge of the act, the bigger the brain signal grows and the more motor units it utilizes to achieve that task. Now, while all this contracting and relaxing of the muscles are occurring, our muscle fibers are undergoing stress and this stress causes microscopic tears in the muscle. In response, the injured cells release inflammatory molecules called cytokines, which activates the immune system to repair the injury. And this is when muscles technically grow. So what makes muscle grow? Two things, the amount of damage or these microscopic tears that you do to the muscle, as well as the repair of that damage. So basically, you can do whatever exercises you want for as long as you want. You're set in rep ranges. You can be whatever the fuck you want it to be technically. But as long as you are tearing up that muscle group properly and your body is in a state to repair that damage, your muscles will grow. Basically, if you tear that muscle group and it's in a state to repair itself, it will get repaired. So what affects repair? Amino acids, insulin-like growth factor, and testosterone are the three building blocks for this repair. Without these three or adequate amounts of these three, you can't repair that damage. Now, we'll get back to these three in a second here. Now, the rate of this repair mechanism in our body is affected by many aspects in our lives that we can't help, like our gender, our age, our genetics, and our body type. But the rate of this repair mechanism is also affected by things that we can affect in our lives, like our nutrition, our hormones, and our sleep, which also all synergistically affect each other. Now, in our modern day society, many young developing men have a lower average hormone production, which I believe is due to a piss poor diet and lack of sleep combined with a rather sedentary lifestyle and things like six to eight small meals and certain gym programs that don't really stimulate the body and hormone production, as well as shit like protein powder and BCAAs. And now I know a majority of you out there are going to try to deny this. You may think that you are more active than the average person or you eat better than the average person in our modern day society society but let's face it almost every aspect of what you do in your life in order to get gains or get the results you want you are trying to find the shortcuts to those results and I believe it's negatively affecting your gains and I know it is because I experienced this for myself while growing up 
taking all these little negatives in various areas of our lives, even though we may be unaware to their effects, is synergistically adding up over time, which is negatively affecting our hormone production, in turn negatively affecting our potential to grow optimal amounts of muscle, and as we understand here, to optimally repair the damage we've done to that muscle. So basically what I'm trying to say here, is you can do all the damage you want, you can tear up your muscles all you want, but if you don't have the optimal state to repair those muscles, you don't have the essentials there to repair those muscles, what's the point of putting all that effort and energy into tearing up those muscle groups if you don't have the state to repair them after? So what about muscle protein synthesis? Muscle protein synthesis gets tossed around a lot in the bodybuilding community, so what is it? Well, remember earlier when I discussed the three building blocks for muscle and one was amino acids? Well, very basically, our muscles are comprised of water, connective tissue, minerals, and a few other things, but also protein. And similar to all the cells in our body, our muscles are subject to ongoing breakdown and repair. Muscle protein synthesis is the process of attaching amino acids together for this repair. Now, muscle protein synthesis is important, but it's just the process. In short, it's just the act of taking the protein we need after we damage and tear our muscles and utilize it for repair and growth. We want more muscle protein synthesis occurring in our body because it will technically yield to more growth and repair. But in general, trying to increase muscle protein synthesis is rather redundant because it's just the process. If you have muscle damage from training and sufficient protein intake and the other key building blocks for muscle are present, then protein synthesis just occurs. It just happens. It's not something that you as an individual need to concern yourself with. You can't flick a switch or inject something to increase muscle protein synthesis. But the things you do in life will affect how much muscle protein synthesis occurs. So for instance, doing multiple sets of a certain exercise in the gym versus only doing one set of that exercise has been shown to increase muscle protein synthesis. But that's because there's more to repair due to increased damage, not because you activated something that forced more repair without an act. So why growth hormone and why should we care about growth hormone? Well, this is where things begin to get a little controversial because you can't prove or show that growth hormone directly affects muscle growth. Growth hormone doesn't go into the cell and affect muscle protein synthesis, but it is the lead in a system and the precursor to the other essentials of muscle growth. Let me show you. So here we can see a diagram of protein synthesis versus protein breakdown or how they are referring to it as protein catabolism. As you can see, their growth hormone is a key factor to stimulating the liver, which stimulates insulin growth factor to assist with muscle growth. In the next diagram here, we have another breakdown of how GnRH, or growth hormone releasing hormone, stimulates the release of growth hormone, which leads to muscle growth and insulin-like growth factor stimulating amino acid uptake, promoting protein synthesis. And here we have yet another diagram breaking down to show how GnRH is stimulated in the brain, which as we saw in the previous diagram, stimulates the release of growth hormone, which stimulates the testes to produce more testosterone. So not only does growth hormone stimulate IGF, which promotes protein synthesis, but it also increases testosterone production. And then just to wrap it up here for you guys, we have a diagram of what happens to testosterone in the cell, which leads to protein synthesis and muscle growth. So my question now is what would happen if we say remove growth hormone from the picture here? What would happen if one of the fundamental processes that is the precursor to stimulating IGF and testosterone production in the body was for say halved? So even if we had lots of damage and tears to our muscle from a solid workout regimen, if we only had half of the essential building blocks for this key stage of repair, are we in a prime or optimal state to grow muscle? No, we're not. And I just don't understand how people can deny this. Now lately I've had peers as well as people online messaging me saying that in their late 20s and early 30s, they are getting their testosterone levels checked and they're finding that they're on the low end of the scale in regards to averages. And this scares them, which causes them to consider going on testosterone replacement therapy or TRT. 
Now, this concerns me because I believe that they just need to be trying to take advantage of aspects in their life that naturally increases their growth hormone. Like, for instance, intermittent fasting, which has shown to increase growth hormone levels 1,500 to 2,000% in men when they go for 20 to 24 hour fast. Or for instance, sauna use and heat acclimation, which has shown to increase insulin-like growth factor levels by 1,500% by adapting it in a weekly uh, scale, you know, doing about an hour spread throughout the week. Or for instance, aspects like weight training with little rest versus weight training with rest and how that affects our growth hormone levels. Now, yes, focusing on increasing your growth hormone 15 to 100 to 2000% daily is great, but it won't immediately shoot up your testosterone and lead to immediate noticeable results. It will take time for your body to adapt to this 1500% increase and begin to adjust it as your new baseline. This may take a couple weeks of consistency as you push through old habits and routines as this baseline begins to adjust and increase. But that increase will cascade down through the rest of the system in your body. After two weeks of having heightened growth hormone levels in the body, you will begin producing more IGF and more testosterone until that adjusts to your new baseline as well, which will put you in a prime and optimal state for growing muscle. I feel most men are putting the effort in the gym to tear their muscle groups and create the damage necessary for muscle growth, but they aren't in an optimal state to repair and grow that muscle, so they are regularly in a state of diminishing returns. Every day you're stepping into that gym, you're taking two to three steps forward, but you're also taking a step or two back by not priming and optimizing your body to be in a state of repair. So does growth hormone affect muscle growth? I would say growth hormone is just as, if not more important to testosterone in regards to muscle growth. And I really don't understand how there are doctors out there that can deny that growth hormone affects muscle growth, especially with what I just shown and proved here in this video. So do you want more muscle growth in your life? I believe all you need to do is focus on the aspects when you're out of the gym that increase your growth hormone levels naturally. Now, this is very situational. It's going to heavily depend on you and your lifestyle and the things you enjoy versus the things you don't enjoy and what you're willing to put up with and the negatives you're willing to accept in your life. There's no perfect way to optimize or become an optimal human being. I believe everything in our lives affect our bodies and affect our minds and in turn affect our hormone levels. Standing for eight hours compared to sitting is going to have a different hormonal effect on your body and in turn affect your growth hormone levels. If you have to sit for eight hours for your job, then it's something you have to do, but you need to then balance that with other factors in your life that are going to balance out that negativity that you're doing to it on a daily basis. Aspects like sex, like your social life, stress in your life is all going to affect your growth hormone levels. And for instance, relaxing for a day or two might reduce stress in your life, which will have a better effect on your hormones. So. It's not a key program that you can just hop onto. You need to learn how to optimize yourself, optimize your body, your mind, your hormones, and your lifestyle as much as you can. Learn the factors that do optimize your growth hormone and your hormone levels and learn to take advantage of them in a way that you enjoy it the most for yourself. This way, Whenever you do go and step in that gym and you tear those muscle fibers up, your body will be in an optimal state to repair that damage. All right, well, there you have a world. I believe this ends the debate on how growth hormone affects muscle growth. You cannot deny that growth hormone affects muscle growth in the whole system of your body. It doesn't have a direct correlation. You can't say that growth hormone actually goes into the cell and affects muscle protein synthesis. But with a lack of growth hormone in the body, you're going to affect the amount of the essential building blocks, the insulin-like growth factor and testosterone that is there to help repair your muscles after you've done that damage. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Go check out the videos in the description box below. There's a lot more value there for you guys and to help you guys understand how your growth hormone and all these other factors are affecting you and your mind and your body and your hormones and your lifestyle. So make sure you guys go leave me a comment in the comment section below and on your way down there, make sure you go smash that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am the Hungarian Experiment.